President Trump confirmed on U.S. television on Sunday, August 18, that he is considering buying Greenland. Denmark essentially owns it. We're very good allies with Denmark, we protect Denmark like we protect large portions of the world. So the concept came up and I said, certainly I'd be interested, strategically it's interesting and we'd be interested but we'll talk to them a little bit. It's not number one on the burner, I can tell you that, he said. Well, a lot of things can be done, he said. Essentially it's a large real estate deal. He indicated that a U.S. takeover might relieve Denmark of a financial burden, talking most likely about the annual grant with which Denmark supports Greenland. It's hurting Denmark very badly because they're losing almost $700 million a year carrying it. So they carry it at a great loss and strategically for the United States it would be very nice and we're a big ally of Denmark, we protect Denmark and we help Denmark and we will, he said. An absurd discussion. By coincidence, the Danish Prime Minister, Mette Frederiksen, was in Nuuk at the time and her reaction indicated well how precarious the situation now suddenly was. With only 5.5 million inhabitants, Denmark is a small country that can hardly afford even the smallest rift in its relations with the US, its second most important trading partner and its most indispensable NATO partner and military ally for more than seven decades. On the other hand, there is no way the Prime Minister could accommodate even the basic premise of the President's suggestion that Greenland and its people, who are all Danish citizens, can be treated as a sellable commodity and survive as Prime Minister of Denmark. In an interview with the Danish Broadcasting Corporation she dismissed the whole concept, this is an absurd discussion, and of course Kim Kielsen, the Premier of Greenland, Ed, has made it clear that Greenland is not for sale, and the discussion stops there. The day after, however, at a press conference with Kim Kielsen in Nuuk, she already went to pains to tell Washington and everyone else how strongly Denmark remained committed to the preservation of good relations with the US. In particular, she made strenuous efforts to stress Denmark's strong commitment to continued security cooperation with the US in Greenland. She foresaw even stronger strategic cooperation, and she remained open to any American wish to increase the U.S. military presence in Greenland in light of the changing security landscape in the Arctic. As to the military presence, we have to follow developments, she said. At this stage it must have been clear to most onlookers in Washington that Denmark remains ready to discuss any U.S. wish to increase its military presence in Greenland or to increase its own military efforts in Greenland. Kim Kielsen, head of Nalik Asusit, Greenland's self-rule government, also acknowledged Greenland's growing significance to U.S. security. The first U.S. bases in Greenland were established during WW2 and Greenland's leaders have no problem with the current U.S. military presence as long as it is followed by a respectful dialogue and as long as a reasonable benefits, jobs, infrastructure and so forth keep flowing Greenland's way. Let's block ads. Why?